Hello everybody and welcome back to another Terraria modding tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at how we can add localization to our items because this is something that's kind of been a long time coming, right? When 1.4 came out, like around a year ago, I don't actually remember if it was a year ago, but they changed the way that you added item names and tooltips. It used to be that you had it added in here. So like say you had this, uh, we'll go into the flintlock pistol here, right? Say we wanted to like change the uh, name. It would it would be something like this. You would say public override void, set static defaults. And you'll notice now when I type this thing out, it's actually giving me an error here because this thing doesn't exist anymore. This method has been completely deprecated now. And the reason for that is because when you want to localize something, right? Like say you have a name that's like, uh, I don't know, like stone sword or something like that, right? You have something like that. Well, what happens if you need to then convert that into 10 different languages, or even if it's just like five? We're gonna be using localization files. And the reason why we have that is because it allows us to, instead of just hard coding all of these strings, we can look up, hey, if this is in Spanish, we'll take this version of this name, or if we're in Russian, we'll take this version of this name. And so that's the whole reason why we've now transitioned over to using localization. And of course, it just makes it kind of easier to add these names and tooltips and descriptions in general. It also means we don't have to recompile Terraria every single time we make a small change to a tooltip description or a name, which is pretty nice. And you can see under localization here, I already have this file in my mod. Now, the localization by default is going to be English, of course, but you can rename this. Say you wanted to have like a Spanish version of this. What you would do is you would duplicate this and then you would say, en say you wanted to do something like a uh, german de would be the the internal name of that language there if you want like a list of all these internal languages you can actually go and just look these up but if you ever do any kind of game development or something like that this is actually like a, a pretty common thing that you're going to be ending up doing and before we go ahead and actually like add our tooltips and stuff to there. I just kind of want to look at this other thing, one of my own projects, so I can actually see the names of all of these languages. So if I go into my language here, yeah, you can see you have EN for English, you have DE, which is going to be for like a German, and then ES for Spanish, FR for French, IT for Italian, and it's going to be PT for Russian. Okay, that's good to know. I did not remember that one off the top of my head, but let's head back over to our Terraria mod real quick. Okay, cool. So you'll notice here in this JSON file, this is an HJSON file. Now, JSON format is going to look something like this. Let's make a new file here, and we'll call this just example.json. So we're just going to just spend a minute just looking at what the format of a JSON file looks like. So this is going to be the base format of a JSON file. You have these two parentheses right here. And what JSON is, is it's essentially just mapping keys to values. And this is really, really great. It's just key value pairs. That's all it is. And most of the time when you use a JSON parser in your code, it's going to be implemented as a hash table, which means it's going to have incredibly efficient lookup times, ideally O of 1 complexity, meaning it's going to just immediately go and grab that value based on the key that it's given. And so there's really no performance issues uh, when you're using this most of the time. Right. So say we have like a, a name, maybe this could be like an item JSON file. You know, that's that's a there's a ton of things you could do with JSON files. But say this name is going to be like our wooden sword like that. So now whenever we got this JSON object, if we searched for the key name, it would return this string wooden sword right here. And so if we were to create another file like this, that would be so like Spanish example dot JSON would be the same thing we would have our name but then maybe this would be like a I don't know pico di materia or something like that I don't know the exact translation for it but it would be something sort of like that and so whenever we wanted to get this name of anything we would actually just choose the appropriate localization file for doing that and so we're just like pulling those values in directly from those files so with that said, let's head into here real quick. And for this big feather, let's actually call this something like uh, an even bigger feather. Okay, and we'll save that. And we'll head into Terraria. Okay, awesome. And now if we go to the big feather, which we actually have equipped over here, let's get rid of all of this stuff because we certainly don't need that. And we'll get rid of this copy. And 
you can see in the bottom it says the following localization files have been changed and will be reloaded so now when i go and hover over this big feather it says an even bigger feather and this is absolutely fantastic whenever you want to change a tooltip unless you have dynamic tooltips in which case you might want to do that with code right so like say you uh, maybe enchanted something or used a prefix right you could have the base text like uh, increase damage you could you could have damage be be localized so that way it would be translated but then the actual percentage would have to be uh, concatenated within the code itself but you can see just how efficient that is and if you go back in here we'll change this back to being just big feather because that's what it's meant to be and we'll save that and then I'll say localization has been changed and it is now called big feather again so it's pretty easy to add like a, a tooltip or a name to a file and you can see this is sort of like the um, the the format of this here you have a JSON object which can then have sub objects so if we go back to our example file here right just because I have some highlighting on things that are not HJSON which there are really not very many differences besides that you can see that in just in a normal JSON let's make this one we have our name, the key value, like the actual name of the key value is in quotation marks, whereas in the HJSON, uh, it is not in quotation marks. So in that case, it might actually be kind of more readable and a little bit easier than just a, a raw JSON file. But both of them are doing the exact same thing, right? We just have our value here. Say this is like a, another JSON object. Our wooden sword is an object in itself. And then that has a name like so, but also as a damage of three, right? And so you can see how this is now an object within an object. And that's all that this is as well. We're just putting an object within our items and then we're giving it a display name and a tooltip. That's all we're doing. So if we go to scroll down here, let's go to our tooltip and we'll change it. You feel heavier instead of lighter. We'll head back into here and you can see it says you feel heavier now. And every time it will reload it, it'll tell you at the bottom of the screen. Okay, awesome. And when it comes to actually making this localization file, just make sure that you either name it this exact same thing, right? En us underscore mods, whatever other localization string name it, it, it would want for this. I don't know exactly what all of them would be for things that are outside of the US, but just make sure that you name it appropriately and then just format your uh, code like this. The neat thing about this is that it doesn't really matter if you have this in different folders or it's because you see the big feather is in my accessories folder, but over here I'm saying items. That's just because whenever Terraria goes to grab its name or tooltip, it will just take that key value pair and it'll be like, hey, this is in the name of this file that we made, right? This is the uh, bigfeather.cs it'll be like okay let's go and find that json object within the items object and go and grab its name and tooltip and whatever other relevant information that you need which is going to be like 90 percent of the time just the display name and the tooltip and when it comes to automatically generating this if you made a mod in 1.3 you can go and deprecate your uh, version of tmod loader by going into properties and going into betas and you can go back to 1.3 legacy and what you can do is there should be a button i haven't done this because i haven't needed to but there should be a button that allows you to generate localization for all of your old files and it will create that folder um, and it will create a localization folder and hopefully at least the english translation in the hjson file but other than that that's pretty much all that you need to do I think I'm going to end the video here, but make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And if you want to be a part of any of the cool competitions or just get to see some exclusive clips of Earthward, join us in Discord with a link in the description. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next devlog.